I said, praise the Lord, this is Preacher Warren. Oh yeah, I did a lot of experiences being a young preacher growing up and also a musician, because I've been preaching the gospel since I was six years old. I've been playing the bass guitar just as long as I've been playing, uh, as long as I've been preaching. I can, I can tell you a lot of experiences I had dealing with play haters in the church and I had to be determined to serve the Lord because if you keep your mind on church people, you'll backslide because you're gonna deal with personalities in church, especially among our own people. Oh yeah, they may jump and shout, but you're gonna deal with personalities because everyone uh, doesn't come to church for the right reason, they have different cliques. Gossiping clicks, backbiting clicks, jealous clicks. Let me share an experience I had being a musician. I've been playing bass guitar just as long as I've been preaching the word. I'll never forget, uh, I dealt with a man, he was 35 years old, I was 17 years old. Never forget this, this is up in the church I grew up in, in Harlem, New York, uh, Refuge Temple Church. Praise God for that church, but it was, I tell you, you had to be strong to be among the saints because you had so many different personalities. And I remember when God would anoint me on the bass, bass guitar, he would anoint me and demons would come out, people would shout and praise God and along with the rest of the musicians. I remember they had this man one time, um, he played the guitar with me, he was 35 years old, i never forget this, 35 years old, I was 17 years old, I was one of the youngest musicians in the church, i never forget this, and i never, I never forget, that, didn't know that this man was play hate me, didn't, didn't know this man was holding animosity in the heart because God was using me on the bass guitar. Didn't realize, I mean, I thought this man was my friend because he was always smiling in my face and said, oh man, you can play, man. God will use you in a mighty way. I didn't realize <laughs> it was just the total opposite. You got to watch people who laugh in your face. You got to watch people who smile in your face. Lama wearing a mask. Come on, tell somebody, take off the mask. Uh, some of y'all wearing masks and it's not even Halloween yet. I don't even celebrate Halloween. I say, hallow be thy name. Thou kingdom come, thou wilt be done. I celebrate Jesus, not Halloween. Didn't realize this man was wearing a mask. Well, it finally came out how much this man hated Preacher Warren. I wouldn't call Preacher Warren then. I was a minister then. Like I'm a minister now, but I just didn't have the title uh, of evangelist. Never forget this. I never forget, I was downstairs in the social hall and I was armor bearer to another man of God. I used to follow, I was his armor bearer at the time, anointed man of God. I'll never forget when this man came in the social hall, I'll never forget this. I was sitting just minding my business, talking about the Lord with the man of God. I'll never, never forget with this same guitar player, he was 35 years old, never forget this. He came downstairs, I believe it was on a Friday night, never forget this, he came and he began to scream at me. He said, you, he said, you're Warren. This is what he's talking to me, like somebody from the hood. Actually, he was a Marine. He came out of the Marines. He said, I hate you. I said, what? I said, I know I'm not hearing, oh. I said, maybe I'm hearing something wrong here. Maybe it's just my mind, but it, I wasn't wrong. He said, I hate you. You know, this man spat on the floor. He said, Puh. he said, I hate you. I said, what did I do to you? He said, people love the way you play the bass here in this church. He said, people think you so good. He said, I play guitar. He, he, and he goes on, and nobody ever pays me no attention. No one ever give me credit of the things I do here in the church playing guitar. And everybody love you. I was so shocked that this man said this to me. I was 17 years old. Never forget this. He was about 35 years old. Never forget this. Now, this happened in front of the church people in the social hall. Meanwhile, my jealous enemies in the church were laughing. They didn't say a word. They wanted this man to hurt me. This is what the man said to me. He said, I'm a cuck your throat. This is what he told me. He said, I'm a cuck your throat. Do you know this man was going to have a, he had a knife on him. The man was literally going to cut me in the church. Meanwhile, no security guards. No one said nothing. At the time, I had a bad temper at the time because people was always provoking me to anger in the church. So I would always defend myself. I didn't have nobody to defend me at the time. I didn't know how to let the Lord fight my battles at the time. I'm 17 years old. So I said, Man, I told the man of God next to me, I said, <laughs> Preacher Graham, if this man sucks me, I'm going to lay this man out here in the church. Meanwhile, everybody watches in the church. Nobody praying, nobody pleading the blood. They're waiting for this. They just like a lot of church people. They like a lot of drama. Not everybody, but I'm like a lot of drama, just waiting for something to happen so they can take it back to the bishop and, 
and say, oh, this Warren's supposed to be a man of God. So here they waiting for this man to cut me in the church. All this over a bass because how good I was on the bass. And there was other bass players who were much better than me, but this man was jealous. It was anointing of my music. So he said, I'm gonna cut your throat. He, and he spat on the floor. He said, puh, now this is in the church now. He did this in the church, spat on, spat on the floor in the church. I said, this man touched me, I'm gonna lay him out. The man of God told me, he said, Warren, hold your peace. I said, Larry, I, I said, Pre Preacher Graham, I said, that's gonna be hard to hold my peace. I'm trying to hold my peace, but this man is provoking me to anger. I'm trying to walk away. And, but, but, but because I respected the man of God, the man of God told me, he said, hold your peace, just sit here. He said, don't say nothing. He said, watch God fight your battles. He said, don't say anything. The man kept on screaming, cussing in the church. Everybody was scared of this man. I, I didn't have no fear. Everyone knew I was a warrior, but the enemy was trying me out. Jealous. This man was jealous. He was 35 years old. Never forget it. I was 17 years old. Do not know when I held my peace, began to pray in my mind, the man walked away. Two months later, the man climbed to a roof doing work on, a, on some roof I heard about. He was a worker doing housework. The man fell off the roof and broke two of his legs. God did it. It backfired. I didn't wish it against him. I didn't pray against him. The man broke both of his legs. I never forget this. Gone. Mavericks broke up too. Gone. See, a lot of people who ask me for prayer, they say, oh, Preacher Warren, can you pray for me? We have to take inventory of ourselves at times. I'm not saying y'all out there, but just listen to what I'm saying here. Make sure that the reason why you're not going through stuff in your life is because you put someone else through. That's deep. A lot of preachers don't preach that part. If you did evil to somebody else, you may be a supervisor that may be crooked, that's doing crooked things to somebody on your job because you're jealous. You know that stuff backfires? All of a sudden now your marriage is messing up. People doing witchcraft against you because you never got it right with somebody that you was envious of. You have an art in your heart against your sister or uh, your brother. And you're doing other people wrong and you try to push it underneath the dirt. Take off the mask because God see everything that we do behind closed doors. No matter how much you jump and shout, if you a witchcraft worker, that witchcraft would backfire against you. Especially when you work against a child of God. That's what they must say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. So when you ask for prayer, make sure you repent it. If you did your mother wrong, if you did your father wrong, do you know that, that, do you know that when you grow up and you have a child, all of a sudden now your child doing you wrong, you reap what you sow. What goes around comes around. So take, let's take inventory of ourselves. I, I can tell you many testimonies where I did with haters, just having the anointing, um, just being an anointed musician. Uh, I, 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 mean, I, I remember I went to church and my amplifiers was broken up in the church. And somebody put a hole in the amplifier and stole two bass guitars in mine. I had another uh, situation where there was another bass player. He was 35 years old, same age uh, the other man was. I was 17 years old, going through this stuff. And I was playing for the radio choir and the Khadija choir, playing the bass, and God would anoint me on the bass, and people would get to live it, along with the rest of the musicians playing under the anointing. And there was this bass player that was in Bishop Bonner's other church in Detroit. He was a great bass player, but he got jealous because my name got down to Detroit. And my pastor's other church, how God would use me on the bass. So this man comes all the way from Detroit, come all the way to Harlem, New York City, in, to Refuge Temple, he stands out front of the church, outside the church. He said, Warren, he said, get out of here. He said, I'm gonna challenge you to a fight. This man was third degree back, black belt. Now this happened on a Sunday, never forget this. All this true story, not making this up. This man got so envious and jealous, this man wanted to kill me in front of the church. Third degree black belt, never forget this. True story, not making this up. I'm not gonna mention his name. And at the time, people was always challenging me because of the envy and the hatred. I went out there, didn't know how to hold my peace at that time either, went out there. I said, you touch me? I said, you going out of here. He saw the rage that was in me. I began to plead the blood of Jesus in front of all the saints. And you know, saints talk, but don't pray. They'll talk about incidents, but when something take place, they don't, hardly don't even pray. They just talk, just looking around. Never forget this. And he saw that rage in me. The Holy Ghost rage, that spiritual warrior in me. I begin to take authority over that demon of hate. This man went into the church, ran into the church. That man never touched me, never forget this. He ran into the church, told the bishop, I started trouble with him. 
Bishop had me in the office. <laughs> so you're starting trouble in the church. I said, Bishop, I didn't start no trouble with this man. He started trouble with me. This man stole my other Abenized, I had an Abenized base. He stole out the church. I knew it was him. That's how jealous he was. The man was 35 years old. I was 17 years old. Never forget this. The man just challenged me. And then when I plead the blood against him and cast the demon out of him, that demon ran to the pastor, told the pastor, I started trouble with him. I ended up getting in trouble over something I didn't do. I can tell you a whole lot of stories I'm going to share with you. I had to learn how to be determined to walk with Jesus and take my eyes off church people. I keep my eyes on the prize. Many of you left the church because you suffered church hurt by people who you thought that was saved. And a lot of them was saved, but they was carnal minded. If you're going to leave that church, don't leave Jesus. That's deep. That's deep. That's deep. I want to say it again. If you're going to leave that church, don't leave Jesus. Because, see, that's not a real church to you. That, that gets a church building. But don't leave Jesus. Be determined to walk with Jesus no matter what. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, I can tell you many situations where I had supposed to get married way before I met my wife, Priscilla. I've only been married for two and a half years. And... Uh, and many times I had friends of mine who slept with women I suppose have been married to, that I suppose have gotten married to. God bless you, young man. Happy to see you. You too blessed to be stressed. Have a good day. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God a young man praising the Lord. Hallelujah. When the praises go up, the blessings will come down. Oh, yeah, I suffered many things in the church, a lot of church hurting. Caught one of my so-called best friends. Uh, actually, I didn't catch him. Uh, my own ex told me, she admitted to me herself that she slept with my best friend in the limousine and this man was already engaged to a Spanish girl. Never forget this. And I thought this was, well, he's supposed to be one of my best friends. He's in South Carolina now. He got remarried, but he slept with one of my exes I supposed to get married to in his limousine having sex. I had many times there was bishops who had uh, flirted with women I supposed to, I was engaged to in the past. A lot of them has even slept with pastors, and bishops in different states. I can tell you, I'm going to share a lot of my testimonies that's going to bless you and how I left the church, but I didn't leave Jesus. I had to get out the organization because I was being lied on so much. And they even had a lie on me saying I was on drugs, and that I backslid. Never was on no drugs. They wanted to see me on drugs. See, a lot of time when you were anointed by God, Oh, yes, you deal with play haters. I'm talking about church people. I'm talking about family. I had family members who used to throw the Bible on the floor, right in the house. Never forget it. They want to see me preach the gospel, but I said, I'm going to keep on preaching anyhow, even when family turns against me. I was about at least 13, 14 years old back then. Praise God, dealing with envious people and jealous people. I said, no, I'm determined to keep on preaching God's word. Oh, hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. I'm not going to leave Jesus. Ha! I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I may have left the church, but I didn't leave Jesus. So a lot of folks left the church, but they left Jesus. If you're going to leave that evil church, don't leave Jesus. Praise God, because even Jesus had problems with people who were supposed to be religious people. They was putting them down. They criticized them. But that didn't stop Jesus. He still did what he was sent to do. Because greater is he that's within you than he that is in the world. I just want to encourage you and share some of my experiences with you. Before I even got married to my wife, it wasn't always easy. Don't think because we smile and we look nice on the outside that we didn't go through. It's a price for the anointing. Now, I know many of you out there have been through stuff. Huh? It's a price for the anointing, but the price is still right. I'm not talking about prices, right? So I used to watch that. I used to like that. But I'm talking about paying the price for Jesus. The price is still right because you'll come out not as pure silver, not as pure bronze, but as pure gold that has been tried in the fire. Huh? I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Now you can have a testimony and say, I passed the test. Now I have a testimony. That's how the anointing grows. That's how the anointing builds. Ah, you can go to Bible school, which is great. But when you have an experience, when you go through something, oh, that's when the anointing comes. When you have a relationship with God, hold on, God will make you strong. I'm preaching right here in the rain. Hold on, God will take away your pain. God bless you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I